Good morning. Welcome to the Master Builder Show, sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. I am your host, Jim Gibson, president of Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, a registered builder in the state of Texas and a graduate master builder certified by the National Association of Home Builders. Today's topic is going to be residential basement uh, built uh, in Texas on part two. My guests today are Tom Whirling with North Texas Basement, Gene Gibson, Vice President of Gibson Home Builders, and also Leon Campbell and his wife, Joan, with uh, Native Shade Tree Farm. Good morning. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. All right. Uh, We're going to talk about basements today, and if you all have any questions, please call us at 877-341-8950. We'll also be talking about some trees and, uh, Leon, where are you located? We're out on, uh, Farm Road 1886, uh, 7351 FM 1886. That puts us about, uh, two miles east of, uh, Farm Road, uh, 730, the intersection there close to the, uh, uh, Silver Creek Volunteer Fire Department. All right. Tom, Tom, you're at North Texas Basements. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your place? North Texas Basements is a new company in the area. Specifically going to be uh, for new homes and additions, putting basements underneath homes now. This is uh, residential. Right. Or commercial. Or commercial, either one. All right. Now it's my turn. Yeah, okay. Okay. Go okay. All right. Hey, you bring me in here, you got to put up with it. I know it. Um, last year we did the Gnome Home for CASA for CASA. CASA is the Court Appointed Special Advocate Program for Children. And last year, three builders, Laughlin Homes, Beninati Homes, and da 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 Gibson Homes, did uh, playhouses, built playhouses, and they were, for lack of a better word, raffled off. And it was a fundraiser for CASA because the people who have the relationship with the children are all volunteers, but there's expense to operating the programs. And so they're doing it again this year. There are now seven builders who are going to compete with Gibson Homes in our gnome home. And Casa for Casa is looking for sponsors who would like to help these seven builders and help Casa with material donations or cash donations. The drawing and the prizes, the houses, will be, um, the drawing's going to be Saturday, April the 26th from 11 to 1. So we're going to act, put on a show. The uh, houses are going to be on display for the month prior uh, to the drawing on Highway 51 at the Super Save Grocery Store so that you can see them, you can walk through, you can find out what Gibson Homes is going to do this year. It's not Gibson Homes. It's Gibson, oh, Gibson Home, Home Builders, Builders is going to do this year. Laughlin Home Builders. Beninati Building Company. There's more. Well, Adami Custom Homes, David Carter Custom Homes, Ray D. Cummins Construction, and Mark Farmer Homes are all going to compete this year to see what we come up with. It's really new and different. You've got good. some bizarre ideas. Well, Native so, Shade Tree Farm could donate a tree for those homes. We'll take it. <laughs> we'll take we'll it. Put it in Trees. Our, 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 our I guess what are we going to call our house this year? It, they're uh, whimsical homes, like the uh, like the gnome home we built last year was five yeah. mushrooms, and we've got one coming up this year. And I'm going to try to surprise everybody with what we do. Yeah, because I don't like his idea yet, so we're still no, talking we're still about it. it. <laughs> grumble, rumble. Well, but, well, you can grow mushrooms in uh, in the basements. We're going to talk about today, right? Well, yeah. Oh, oh, oh! There's a wound for you. Shiitake or portobello? What <laughs> uh, those and uh, maybe some others I've heard about. I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, this is the Casa of Parker County second annual Casa for Casas. April 26 from 11 to 1 will be the drawing and the houses will be available to tour, to play in and to buy opportunities to own one. Well, on with the show now. We're going to talk about building basements in Texas and why don't most or, or why haven't a lot of basements been built in Texas? And that's because the builders are liable for the foundation and it's been a liability issues and we have expansive soils. But just with any foundation, if it's not built right, you're going to fail. Uh, and builders now are held accountable, uh, by the Texas Residential Construction Commission, uh, for 10 years for structure. And uh, so if you're building a basement, the main thing is build it right. And that's why we have Tom here today. Tom? Hello, Tom. Build it, build it right? <laughs> that's, a, that's the best way to start. Um, really, basements are the best foundation that's available to the world because you go down 
go down into uh, undisturbed soils. And then after you build the basement, you backfill around it. So Mother Earth gives it a good, nice bear hug, and it doesn't move. It doesn't move. Okay, well, before you start a basement, what what, uh, what do we need to do? Well, like anything required in this area is, you know, soils analysis so we know what's down there when we start digging. And How, to what depth, though? You have to be at a... We go, what depth do you go for a slab? Well, I go 20 feet on a slab, but... Uh, so how he, deep do you have to go for a basement? I am, We really don't care much beyond the depth of the basement. So you, if you're going to have an 8-foot basement or 10-foot basement, we really only need to know what's down there at 8 or 10 foot. Oh, okay. We're, we're concerned with how much bentonite is in the in the soil. How much what, what? Bentonite. Okay, which is? Bentonite is the expanse of clay. The clay, yeah, is, yeah. is what absorbs water. and uh, or, not. or not. And what happens when it absorbs water? It swells. When it dries out, it shrinks. And, and it depends on uh, the content of the clay. And uh, I, I see you coming up with a question there. <laughs> <laughs> well, is this bentonite um, unique to the North Texas area, or is it all over the country? It's all over the country. Just in different concentrations and quantities. Mm-hmm. Um, even up in Ohio from where I'm from, there's parts mm-hmm. of Ohio that have a lot of bentonite. And we just do things a little different in that scenario. A lot of people think you want a bigger bigger footer underneath the walls. In bentonite, no, you need smaller. So bentonite doesn't grab it as much. But uh, you have a lot of concentrated bentonite through the center of Texas all the way up into Colorado. And Colorado has basements all over. We've got to take mm-hmm. another break. We'll be back here in a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.yourcircleofwealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson. G-I-B-S-O-N. That's YourCircleOfWealth.com. Fort Worth Lighting, serving Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties with a selection of interior and exterior lighting fixtures. They also have ceiling fans, mirrors, and vanities in all sizes. A lighting consultant will help you with your decisions. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting Consultant, the number is 817-597-6320, or the website is FortWorthLighting.com. 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. Zion Hill Estates, five minutes from the center of Weatherford, grocery stores, hospitals, banks, and department stores. In the Peaster School District, one-acre lot minimums give you space to spread your arms and enjoy country living. Jim Gibson will build you the home of your dreams in Zion Hill Estates. North of the square to 920, left to Zion Hill Road, then 2.4 miles to Zion Hill Estates. Jim Gibson would like to show you the land in his energy-efficient model home. You can call Jim at 682 829-2116. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guest today is Tom Whirling with North Texas Basements and Leon and his wife, Joan, with uh, it's not Texas Native Tree Farm, it's just Native Native Shade Shade Tree Tree Farm. It's written out, right? I know it's written out, but I got the page flipped. (laughs) And my wife, of course, here, she's going to keep me straight. (laughs) Anyway, we're talking about basements before we left, and we're back. 
And before you start a basement, the uh, first really thing you need to know is what type of soils you have. And you can either pull up, well, you pull up charts for the U.S. Department of Agriculture has soil information on most uh, states in the United States. But really, truly, uh, what we do on standard foundations is do drilling. And we will drill down about 20 foot, and they will give me a breakdown of the soil foot by foot and give me the soil makeup. And, Tom? Oh, that. get back into this discussion because I asked how come if this betonite is all over the place, if it's all over the country, why don't we have basements all over Texas? And you said because you don't, you don't need them. them. Basements are basements are up north because of the frost. Um, Ohio typically there's a three foot frost line. Michigan they like to go four because it's it freezes deeper. So what you've got is you've got to get your house below that frost line so the frost, you know what frost does, right, it makes everything right. thicker. So if the frost gets underneath your house, it pushes it up. And that's the strongest thing you're going to get is a frozen frozen movement. So up north, Colorado, Washington, you know, wherever, they go deep to get below that frost. And that's why you don't have basements here because it doesn't freeze in Texas. Not no, we don't have that deep a frost line. I mean, yeah. uh, well, uh, we don't even have to frost protect our basements here. No, like I mean, north. you know, your water lines what maybe a foot in the ground. Foot, yeah, foot sixteen inches, eighteen yeah, inches. It just doesn't exist up there. Our water li- up in Ohio, where I'm from, where water lines are four foot in the ground. And what were you saying about slabs? Well, actually, what we were talking about here yeah. is slab foundations, and what everybody's scared of is soil soil movement right. here. Well, soil moves everywhere in the world. This just doesn't happen in Texas, okay? So what you've got is earth doesn't soil the dirt. We all know when you dig down, it's naturally compacted. And when you bring in fill, if you do it right, you're um, anal- analyzing the soil that you're bringing in, which then they set proctors, engineering proctors, right. and they test that as you raise your soil up so that you get – 95 or whatever percentage of compaction that you want. Well, you know when you dig out the earth, the earth is at 100% compaction. It can't get any more compacted than that. Well, your soil movement is on the crust, the surface of the earth. The closer you get to the top of the earth, just like last night in the metroplex, metroplex it rained last night. So the very crust, maybe the top inch, right. has gotten bigger. Now, the dirt down, 10 foot down, didn't get bigger last night, but the Maybe the top inch did. So the closer to the surface of the earth, the more the soil is going to move, expand, contract, and whatever. And so you get to soils condition. What is the worst foundation put on moving soils? It's the shallowest foundation, which is the Texas slab. Well, it depends on what kind of Texas slab. I mean, you've got uh, post tension, you've got... Uh uh, waffle grid, and and you're talking about really slab on grade with no footings and no piers or no beams, and uh, that's the reason we put piers, beams, and footings in most of our slabs down here to keep them from moving. And you're saying they will move. Uh, hey, here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, with any slab, you got the waffle waffle design. Well, you don't have to have. Well, uh, yeah, but in between that, in between your waffles, your beams, or whatever, right. you're still only sitting with four inches. Of concrete, right? On oh, you so, talking about the slab base? I mean, the, the, the top of the slab, the top of the slab, the floor surface. Uh, under the majority of that, you've only got four inches, and it is not drained. It's not conditioned. It's just there. So there's nothing to keep that ground from pushing up or down, pushing that up. Okay, so it's still subject to PVR, which is your vertical. You know, rise. Explain PBR. PB stands for PBR. Potential stand. vertical rise. Okay, here uh, you go. He's testing me here. <laughs> um, but so you still got that movement, and your underneath your slab is not drained, so it's subject to moisture content under the slab. But like uh, in in a basement, though, you're digging a well, so you have a moisture problem coming down. In uh, you've got a, a chance of the water coming down there. If you build a slab right, you're putting it up, and you're putting a five percent slope away from that slab, so water does not collect under it. Uh, and that's what we try to do here: is go ahead and if you do your piers right, you can you can protect against uh, vertical rise. And uh, if you slope your soils away from the foundation on your final grade, you don't have any water getting under them unless you build. 
sidewalks and gardens are around it that you make a dam around your house. And when you do that and then fill up the, the water, it, it, of course, has a chance to seep under the soil or seep under the slab. So uh, that's the reason we kind of advise against it. If you've got flower beds and stuff like that, just make sure they've got a drain plane away from the structure, away from the foundation itself, so you don't collect water under the house. Uh, Leon, you got anything to throw in? No, no, man. This is very interesting. I had no idea. I've got that my trees, uh, when it rains, they raise up and down. You know, I never right. noticed them. You know, doing that in the field, but I guess it happens pretty slow. But well, no, this yeah. is uh, no, this is very interesting uh, from a landscaping point of view because of the uh, the percentage of grade. Uh, I mean, it, it's kind of common sense to. Uh, to do that kind of thing with whatever you're doing to keep water from getting under whatever it is that you're trying to protect. But um, I, th- I can see how it would be very easy uh, in, a, in a landscape setting to lose sight of that right. and uh, and create a problem that uh, that could easily be avoided. Yeah, most of our, well, all of ours uh, on around, if we're, if we're pouring an edging around the flower bed or we're pouring a sidewalk or anything, I've got PVC, the pipes that come under the, under the uh, sidewalk itself. And so it... It, it allows all the water to drain out of the area, away from the slab, and it, it's what you want to do uh, is keep all the water away from that slab as possible, and that will uh, mm. save your slab most yeah, of the Yeah, an appropriate use of things like French drains uh, right. could also do some good in that area. Yeah, especially if you've got your, you're sitting on a hill or anything, you've got moisture coming down or water coming down off the hill against your slab there, you want to make sure you've got a, a good route away from your, your slab right. around the foundation. All right, let's go back to some basements. We, this is supposed to be basement part two. Do you remember where we left off the last time we discovered? Uh, we dealt with all just construction issues back there. All right. Not pros and cons, but all the construction issues. Well, we're gonna, well pros and cons are a major issue, too. We're going right. to we're gonna have to take a break here, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.YourCircleOfWealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson. G-I-B-S-O-N. That's YourCircleOfWealth.com. Fort Worth Lighting, serving the building professional in Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties. Services include plan takeoff, site walkthrough, and delivery. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting consultant, the number is 817-597-6320, or the website is FortWorthLighting.com. Again, it's 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. Zion Hill Estates, five minutes from the center of Weatherford, grocery stores, hospitals, banks, and department stores. In the Peaster School District, one-acre lot minimums give you space to spread your arms and enjoy country living. Jim Gibson will build you the home of your dreams in Zion Hill Estates. North of the square to 920, left to Zion Hill Road, then 2.4 miles to Zion Hill Estates. Jim Gibson would like to show you the land in his energy-efficient model home. You can call Jim at 682 429-2116. Four two nine two one one six. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. 
Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I'm your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guest today is Tom Whirling with uh, North Texas Basements and Leon and his wife, Joan Campbell, with Native or Native Shade Tree Farm. Okay, we're going to have to get in here more often than, uh, I know. so you can practice that. <laughs> and me, I don't know why I have a problem with that. I want to say Texas Native Shade Tree Farm, and for some well, reason, right it's not, I know, but go it's right not. But that's primarily what y'all are dealing with, though, is Texas trees, correct? Texas right. trees. All right. Well, it is a Texas native tra- shade so, tree form. Yeah, it's just not the name. It's not the name. <laughs> correct. All right. We were talking about uh, continuing on from the first segment we did on these basements, and we talked about primarily the construction in basements on the last show, and we're going to talk about what on this show. Hello. Well, I thought you wanted to talk about pros and cons. That's where we left it off last time. Okay. Let's talk about pros and cons. Give me some pros. Pros, they're, they're a mile long. Um, or give me cons. <laughs> cons are are none. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is, this is a one-sided conversation. I right? can tell. <laughs> hardly, hardly. There, there are no cons as long as they're built right. Correct. Yeah. And that's right. part of the issue in North Texas. Right. From all the horror stories I've heard so far. Well, that's, that's, uh, the same. I, you know, I, I've had, uh, there's been builders that fail here in Texas. There were some builders over here in, in one area or one primary builder, he was going to put a, a basement underneath every house in the subdivision. And uh, he was pretty well bankrupt uh, after a couple of years because he didn't put them in right. And uh, that, uh, it, you know, it, as with any foundation, if you don't follow all the proper techniques, uh, you're you're up for failure to start with. Give, it, give us some pros. Pros, first one is um, additional square footage. At a very minimal cost, um, we're seeing some where they're almost a trade-off because they're coming in with a lot of fill, retaining walls, piers, compaction, and everything else. So there's it's almost a trade-off sometimes. Right. And then there's um, on a we're doing a flat lot basement right now in a typical metroplex subdivision, seventy-three foot wide lot, and that home's going to have a nineteen hundred square foot basement under it, thirty-one hundred square foot. Above, so you got about five thousand square foot, and that home's going to cost maybe thirty thousand dollars more than what it would without a basement. So you're getting another two thousand square foot, nineteen hundred square foot for about fifteen bucks a square foot. I'm going to ask you my pet peeve question when people ask me is how much per square foot does a basement cost? Uh, how many walls? How many windows? How many corners? How big is your garage? <laughs> right. You know, it yeah, there's no the square price per foot. Pound. Man, yeah. I hate that question. How much per square foot? How much is the new car? Right, yeah, that's what I tell them. Okay. How much? How much does the new car cost per pound? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it just, no, well, it, it 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 depends on what kind of car you got. You know, you, if you buy a Volkswagen, you get so much per pound, and then if you buy a Rolls Royce, you get so much per pound. Right. But there yeah. are there's still basics. When, with my Chicago experience, um, one of the problems they ran into with this absolutely gorgeous, I basement was that the sun, the power went out for days and the sump pump stopped running i haven't heard you mention sump pumps yeah what is a sump pump anyway sump pump is a let's call it an oversized bucket buried in the floor that's uh collecting the water that gets down around the basement okay that water around the bottom of the basement goes to this bucket that's mm. a pit sump pump pit and in that we put a sump pump basically a pump just to pump it out that's it's a water name. submerged pump. Right. Does it come on automatically? Yes, it's got a float. Okay. So it's in a bucket. When the water gets high, it turns on. Water goes down, it turns off. Well, can you keep your minners in there during the you know sufficient season? <laughs> <laughs> Buried in the concrete? Yeah, you only have to do it once. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but when the power goes off, that is an issue. If you're if you've got a flat lot basement, you know now if you've got one on a hillside. You don't have a sump pump because your drainage can go out the back of the house or mm-hmm. out the front, whichever, you know. The so all inside. this dialogue about drainage and locale and all that goes by the wayside if you're in a flat piece of ground. Then no, you're saying you still, have to. We still need drainage away from the house because we don't want, let's say, rainwater coming off the roof and down your gutter and going down to the sump pump because you want to pump your, your rain out, you know, so you still want drainage going down and around out to the street, out the back of the lot or whatever. So that's still important mm-hmm. because you don't want to pump that water out. So you don't put a sump pump in every basement that's in a flat lot? Yes. You we do only, put them we in. We do not put them in. Do not put them in. Where you have an open basement. 
where it's you know, on a hill. On a mm-hmm. hillside. Okay. Because it can naturally just drain out the back. So there's no reason to have a sump pump pit in that one. Under, underneath the basement floor, uh, Leon, is uh, what they do. They, they put in gravel. So all underneath that basement floor is gravel. And uh, so the water, if it does collect, it collects there, and then it flows to the sump pump through the gravel to that. Yeah, okay, so pump. after the excavation, you put down uh, the gravel, uh, like pea gravel or something like that, and then you put the concrete on top of that? No, we do footers first. Okay. Which is a, you know, let's call it a sidewalk. Right. That the walls are going to stand on. Then we put drainage pipe on the inside and the outside of that sidewalk, hmm. and that collects all the water. Now, if... If you're going to, if you've got a walkout basement, that outside footer tile, footer mm-hmm. pipe, drains out down the hill. Okay. Okay? If you've got a flat lot basement, the outside one connects to the inside one and goes to a sump pump pit, so a sump pump can, you know, uh, Lip- get it out of there. Right. But then before we go any further, we put down stone, so even underneath the floor we have drainage. Our whole basement is drained. So moisture content around my basements doesn't exist because we've got the whole perimeter and underneath this basement. Is there um, a vapor, vapor barrier associated with this, like the you know the black poly you put down under a slab? White or, I mean, clear or black. It doesn't, yeah, yeah well, I mean, right. that the type of thing. The point is you don't let the moisture come up to the concrete. Yeah, you're trying to combat ca- capillary action with that. How much hydraulic pressure are we talking about? Are you, if you don't do any of this, you make it's effectively a swimming pool, right? Because they don't. No. Do, wouldn't it push? Can it? Can it theoretically lift the house if you don't drain off the moisture? Is there that much pressure from the water? No, all concrete cracks, so any water underneath your floor is going to come up through cracks and around the slab okay. of the you know the basement floor because mm-hmm. you've got joints all the way around the perimeter where the basement floor is poured up against the wall, so it'll come up through that. So you're not going to get a hydraulic lift out of it. Okay. But basically, we backfill with all stone and stone underneath the floor. So, And then with our drainage around the basement, we've stabilized our moisture content around that house. There is no moisture. There is no movement around that house. And then that stone gives us a little bit of a buffer of any push from outside of that. All the way around the perimeter. They, they fill it up. Uh, they've got a, uh, a space between the exterior wall of the basement mm-hmm. and the ground itself is what two foot or one foot about two foot. about two foot and what he does he fills that up all the way within a certain what within a foot of the the surface of the soil mm-hmm. so you've got all that gravel all the way around so any water that comes in there bleeds out uh, a direction around the house if, if um i'm a new homeowner and i like basements i'm you know i'm a northerner and I grew up with them because it's cool in the summertime. It's ambient temperature of the ground, which is... 66. Huh? Yeah, it depends on the depth. Oh, the depth, right. 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 It depends on the depth. But how do I know the difference between a good and a bad? You keep saying, well, if they build them right, well, you what's wrong look until like? Until they fail unless you... Uh, so you have no idea. Yeah, it really comes down to having a, someone that puts it in and having a, a engineer that actually do, designs them right. It takes a. It's taken me months to find an engineer here. It specializes in basements, or will it be willing no, to do just, them? No, just just knows how they really work. Because outside of Texas, they're all built the same way, but in Texas, they build them differently. They build them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what wrong is that? Well, I've had I've had a number of home builders call me that want to do wine cellars. Oh yeah. I yeah. you know it's oh, only she- a fifteen by fifteen wall room. I says okay, this fifteen by fifteen. Room foot room where we put in the sump pump pit. Right. What's that? Right. Well, what are you going to do with your water around there? I mean, the water is in the ground when you don't when you don't have city sewer. When you don't have a city water line, where do you go? You don't go to the sky for your water. You go down to the ground. So it's down there. And these guys say, "What do you What do you mean the sump drainage uh, sump pump pit? Uh, right. We never put those in." I says, "Well, you've had problems with all your uh, wine cellars, haven't you?" Yeah. I says, "Well, that's why." But you actually put two sump pumps in, in, in all your... Don't on you? a flat lot. Right. On, on a flat, flat lot, lot, yes. And one is to, uh, if any moisture does get up on, on the slab or, or you know, you're know in there hosing it down or whatever, mm-hmm. you can pump that water out off the slab itself. Uh, and then you've got one below the slab that sits down in that bucket, like you said, it pumps any water that may come in there uh, out prior to coming in. What about putting uh, restrooms and stuff down in, in a basement? That's a third pit. 
That's a third pit. Unless your sewer's deep enough. If right. your sewer's deep enough, you can just run right on in there. But but um, if you if the sewer is above floor height, mm-hmm. we put you in another pit, which is a sealed pit, sealed sewer pit. It's the same thing, an oversized bucket, and you plumb to that. And, and you got, pump out of it? And you pump out of it. You it's got a two-inch grinder pump in it. And you put a, a grinder pump in there. Oh, like we've seen that in some well, neighborhoods uh, that have the whole neighborhoods have grinder pumps. Right. Well, right. it's, it's, it's a little bit hills. different than that. It's a little bit different than that. Oh, okay. That's a big one. These are typically a pit that's three foot deep, and it's actually a sump pump. It's right. just got a different cutting arrangement on the bottom. Mm-hmm. It's it, That's all it is. But the ones you're talking in subdivisions, yeah. those are a yeah. different animal. Those are a different animal. The um, other thing that we were talking about before the show was the uh, power failure up north. The pumps go out. The water backs up through the sump pump into the basements. And the um, concept was to plumb the sump pump instead of pumping plumb that sump pump um, into the wastewater lines. So would there be sufficient hydraulic pressure to rise, to raise the water up to go out? No. So you think it'd still come up through the ground? Well, if they're, if they're hooking it up to their sanitary sewer line, uh-huh. they're, they're doing, they're, they're really hurting the sanitary sewer system of this area because you're increasing the sanitary sewers they're decreasing the capacity because they're adding rainwater to it, that, and that is against all EPA regulations. And this was an emergency backup scenario. Instead of the water coming into the basement, what's being discussed is the power cuts off the sump pump, then a valve would open with power failure, and the water that's coming down goes out. Oh, into so, the sewer. Well, there, so it's an emergency, not a constant, an emergency backup. But that only works if your sanitary sewer is down, down below it. Down below the water rolls downhill. Yeah, it's not gonna if your if your sanitary sewer is coming in four foot up mm-hmm. up from the floor, and it it, it's not gonna work. Um, okay. So it depends on the situation. So then you have sewer water going down into the sump pump. It's more likely. Yeah, raw. You got sanitary sewer backup then. Excellent. Okay. Yeah, Which is a whole another can of worms. Yeah, the thing that they need to do there is just go ahead and put in some type of uh, propane or a battery backup, battery backup, or you know, some, like I said, propane generator, uh, something to generate uh, electricity to mm-hmm. your refrigerator, to your uh, all your yeah. essential things. I mean, provide somewhat uh, some lighting throughout the house, refrigerator, your your sump pump, and stuff like that. And and those are getting more and more prevalent uh, throughout the United States. I know when we lived in Guam over there, just about everybody, every new home that was built over there had a backup unit because their power went out so often. No, they turned it off. There's a difference. Well, yeah, when they they, they had... Uh, On Friday night, they turned off the electricity. Sometimes. Because, yeah, sometimes if they didn't have enough fuel. Right. And we're, they're waiting for a ship to bring fuel in, then they shut the electricity off. Well, and, and the whole thing is you don't need a gigantic generator. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can go down to TSC or... Walmart and buy a yeah. you know two thousand watt generator and you know between two neighbors or two three hundred dollars and if you need a generator you share it you know the big, biggest thing is to get your uh, refrigerator running right mm-hmm. and if you have a sump pump run that get sump that pump puppy running yeah so it's not a big thing of you know a couple three neighbors going yeah. together if you all got basements and have a generator yeah. sitting there because they ended up. Uh... <clears throat> Uh, Over uh, two foot of water backed up. Yeah, and that's 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 an issue with basements. That is a potential mm-hmm. issue, but so that's everywhere. a con. That's a con. You said there was no con. <laughs> that's no. not a con. He's saying that's an issue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a con. That's an issue. Oh, okay. <laughs> but those are things that if somebody has the, the the resources to build these gigantic houses, to make that part of the package in the presentation, right? Because your phone's going to ring the day the power cuts out. And especially if it's some type of uh, national, or not national, but a local emergency where the power has been shut down and is down for days, uh, yeah, like yeah. it was up there in Chicago where you were. Where mm-hmm. actually uh, they were, And it's they were, happened out here when they've had storms and the power's off for days on end. Oh, we've had, you know, when I lived in Ohio, we'd have days, especially during the winter. Mm-hmm. You know, a storm comes through, we'd be without power for a week. Go down there, some pump pits just about fall. The mm-hmm. power comes on, you know. That's all. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, but I, all the homes I lived in Ohio till I was forty-five years old, and all finally the homes smart, I lived up huh? there. What's that? Finally got smart. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got that right. Yeah, got here as fast as I could. 
But uh, we're so glad it you're just, here. It just took a while. <laughs> but uh, in those four to five years, we lived in all these houses with basements, and we never had any of the water water in the basement. So you know, it's it's something to be concerned with. But is it going to happen every other day? No. The other consideration is. Um, one of my f- favorite shows that we've had on, and we've had some really great ones, was on rainwater harvesting. It would seem to me that this might be another area to harvest. If you've got a pump running, is that groundwater any good for watering anything? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Jim, you backed off. <laughs> well, Jim. yeah. It just required, if you're going to use anything for potable or anything like that, if you're harvesting Well, you have to treat water, it if it comes off to, the roof, yeah. too. But you'd have right. more sediment and stuff like that in it. That's the only difference. Uh, no, yeah. actually, well, Jim, it's, you know, if you, it's If you spotless. harvest that rainwater, I, I, you know, check this out. You, you know, you've got that basement. You, you just direct it in there. You don't put furniture and stuff like that. You get an indoor pool. You, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> we could use that as a storage tank. Yeah. Okay. What, what are some other pros? Pros is uh, the number one thing that really frustrated me when I moved here to Texas is the HVAC equipment and ductwork in the attic. Right. That has got to be the most insane thing I've ever seen. You know, you're in the hottest part of the country, and where do you put your H? Where do you put your ductwork? In the attic. In the attic with the hottest part in the house. Now, I don't, right. you know. And where do you think it ought to be? In the basement. For That's, a couple of reasons. It's cooler down there. So, you know, late February, March, April, you're actually going to be able to cool your house by just turning the fan on. Move that air. We're trying to heat it at that time, though. No, you're trying to cool it. <laughs> depends right. on what but, day it is. Yeah, yeah, it depends on which way the sun's coming from. But, uh, you know, during those days when you don't need a lot of air conditioning, turn your fan on the f- on the HVAC and circulate that air out of the basement. Okay, you're gonna cool your house for free, and we are going to. You need to go to a break now. Yes, we need to take another oh. break. We'll be back here in a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.YourCircleOfWealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson. G I B S O N. That's your circle of wealth.com. Fort Worth Lighting, serving the building professional in Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties. Services include plan takeoff, site walkthrough, and delivery. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting consultant, the number is 817 597 6320, or the website is fortworthlighting.com. Again, it's 817 597 6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. Zion Hill Estates, five minutes from the center of Weatherford, grocery stores, hospitals, banks, and department stores in the Peaster School District. One-acre lot minimums give you space to spread your arms and enjoy country living. Jim Gibson will build you the home of your dreams in Zion Hill Estates, north of the square to 920, left to Zion Hill Road, then 2.4 miles to Zion Hill Estates. Jim Gibson would like to show you the land in his energy-efficient model home. You can call Jim at 682 429-2116. Four two nine two one one six. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. 
Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I am your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guests today are Tom Whirling with North Texas Basement and Leon and his wife, Joan Campbell, with Native Shade, Shade Tree Farm. Farm. <laughs> All right. And? Oh, yeah, I forgot. You're here, too. Gene is here. <laughs> and... Uh, Anyhow, we're talking about basements. There's our subject today. And we, you said there's three issues that you want to consider when uh, you're thinking about building a basement, and those three issues were? Well, three issues are the amount of bentonite in the soil at the bottom of the excavation. Right. Being, you know, how much movement we're going to get down there. Correct. The second issue is how much groundwater, natural spring, or whatever is in the soil from that same level up. Yeah, how much do you want to pump out? That, yeah, because if you got a nice, healthy spring going, you're going to be pumping, pumping forever. forever. 24 hours. There's a lot of basements that never even trinkle into that sump pump pit. Okay, because so don't think that, you know, subsurface water is an issue. It may be, not typically. Okay, like right. the basement we're doing in North Richland Hills, that ground is so tight, water won't get through that. So there's no there's no water up there. So that basement we're doing right in, now in North Richland Hills, there's a potential there that some pump pit will never have water in it. And that that's a uh, on level ground that you're that's building. That's level on. ground. But you're still putting in the sump pump for pump for an exceptionally rainy year, or something. Well, it needs ex- to be there. It's got to be there. It's a level ground basement. Yeah, it's got to be there. You know, that's like um, you're heading out of town. You don't know how far the next gas station is. You going to go with a full tank or a quarter tank? You know, you put it there so you've got it. Okay, in case you do need it. Mm -hmm. Now, the third issue in uh, deciding if you want to do a basement is um, how much rock there is. And that just comes down Mm -hmm. to a cost issue. You know, how much money you want to spend to dig it. Yeah, if they have to jackhammer the whole thing out, well, you wouldn't have to pour it then. You're just living it. (laughs) Yeah. But it just, you know, you know what it is to try to move rock. Yeah, we had, uh, we we put in some septic tanks where we've uh, had to dig for 11. 10, 11, 12 hours, uh, you know, they, they bring the jackhammers in, they jackhammer down about six or eight inches, and they take the backhoe and they pull it out of there. So you can imagine if, if it took uh, 11, 12 hours to dig a septic t- system, how long it would take to dig a basement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're uh, we're working with a builder up in north, uh, up north Lake Bridgeport, mm-hmm. and we're on we're on rock. Yeah. And I said, if you got a guy that's worked on this rock, you take care of the excavation. We'll come in afterwards because <laughs> yeah. you don't know. I mean, yeah. it's it's potential where if the rock is real thick and the people really want it really bad, we'll blast it. Right, Dynamite. drill it and blast it. And yeah, that that would be that would be probably the least expensive way to do it. Yeah, core it, core it, blast it, and make it make oh it stones gosh. instead of bedrock. Oh, yeah, and some of those pieces of rock they pulled out are are six foot tall, five foot tall. Yeah. They're huge pieces yeah. from the septic tank. Yeah. So those are the three issues in deciding if you want a basement. You know, what's down there, how much water, if you want to pump water forever, and how, if we got to dig rock. Those, That's it. Other than that, there's no big thing to keep anybody from having a basement anywhere in the world. You know, a question that uh, some people from Texas might have, because we're generally not familiar with basements, is how do you get, uh, can you bring light into the basement? Uh, how do you do that? This one in North Richland Hills? Um, North Richland Hills is requiring us to have a second means of egress. We we got the stairway. They want a second escape. So what we're going to do there is we're going to have a four-foot by four-foot sliding window, which is is an egress window um, at the longest side of the house. And that will be um, on the outside. We'll have a window well. I think we'll just do a small retaining wall right right Mm -hmm. there. Okay, so, so, what, so, so you we just use, use the term that uh, probably most people don't understand around here. What's a window well? That's just um, a window well is just a cavity it's to like, get you down into the window window area. Like a half a barrel. Yeah. yeah half a barrel. Below the surface of the ground. Right, right, right. You get down. It's just a well. You know, you're yeah. looking down in, yeah. and there's a window at one yeah. side of it. And then that's the wall, of, part of the basement wall. Is that no. It? No, we can't do that because then we're in the property setback, and if we pour the basement wall out there, then we got foundation out there. Uh-huh. So, so we've got to make that out of. Um, there's number of manufacturers that actually make these window wells out of plastic, and you anchor them to the foundation, you backfill, yeah. or you can do them with uh, rock, do a retaining wall. It's right. pretty, but 
that home up in North Richland Hills that we're doing right now, uh, it's designed where that that basement underneath a 3,100 square foot home, that basement has a room, 19 by 42, mm-hmm. with a window at the end of it. Yeah, very nice. And you, I like this with a nine foot ceiling. You can't do that in the attic. What do you recommend uh, <laughs> as far as footprint uh, of the foundation versus footprint of the actual house above it? You don't want to build larger foundation than your footprint above, correct? It's possible. It's possible it's not, to put. It's not feasible, correct? Well, it depends on how much money you got. Well, uh, don't you have a greater chance for, for water infiltration? Well, what I'm thinking is you'd want, let's say, you're not going to put a basement out there and put dirt on it, which you can, right. but that. You know, it's not really overly practical. But what I'm thinking is, let's say you got a back porch, you want the basement underneath that, that can be done. You want a basement underneath your garage, that can be right, done. Right, right. But to just to go out and then bury dirt over top of it, that's not real practical. It's that's a firm not real home. Practical. Yeah, it could be, but, you know, do that, then put a regular house. You know, mm-hmm. it can, anything can be done. It just comes down to, you know, what you want to do. Cubic dollars. Yeah, cubic dollars. There we, you go. We've got to take another break. We'll be back here in a couple of minutes. Did you know that some of the best home builders in the entire nation are right here in Parker County? Hello, everyone. This is Lynn Bearden, president of First National Bank of Weatherford. Our lenders believe your family deserves the best when it comes to your dream home. First National Bank is proud to support the Master Builder Show on QXFM. First National Bank in Weatherford has been building homes in Parker County since 1880. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. YourCircleOfWealth.com, a recent study by one of the world's largest financial institutions, estimates that over 90% of baby boomers will not retire financially independent. We have prepared a financial report entitled Your Circle of Wealth. Learn how changing the way you manage your money can dramatically increase your wealth. To get a copy, you may go to www.yourcircleofwealth.com and enter the passcode Gibson, G-I-B-S-O-N. That's yourcircleofwealth.com. Fort Worth Lighting, serving Parker Wise, Palo Pinto, and surrounding counties with a selection of interior and exterior lighting fixtures. They also have ceiling fans, mirrors, and vanities in all sizes. A lighting consultant will help you with your decisions. For an appointment with a Fort Worth Lighting Consultant, the number is 817-597-6320 or the website is fortworthlighting.com. 817-597-6320 for Fort Worth Lighting. Zion Hill Estates, five minutes from the center of Weatherford, grocery stores, hospitals, banks, and department stores. In the Peaster School District, one-acre lot minimums give you space to spread your arms and enjoy country living. Jim Gibson will build you the home of your dreams in Zion Hill Estates. North of the square to 920, left to Zion Hill Road, then 2.4 miles to Zion Hill Estates. Jim Gibson would like to show you the land in his energy-efficient model home. You can call Jim at 682 429-2116. Four two nine two one one six. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, 2401 Zion Hill Road, Weatherford, Texas, 682-429-2116. We specialize in homes to suit each and every individual that expects special attention. We help design, finance, and close on every home we build. We use green building techniques in all of our homes. You can contact Jim at masterbuildershow.com. Gibson Home Builders Incorporated, Weatherford, 682-429-2116. Welcome back to the Master Builder Show. I'm your host, Jim Gibson. Today's show is sponsored by the First National Bank of Weatherford. My guests today are Tom Whirling with North Texas Basement and uh, Leon and Joan Campbell with Native Tree, yeah. tree, farm. Tree, tree farm. That is your cue, you know. <laughs> yeah. I just should say your names and I let you introduce who you're with. Uh, y'all are with y'all, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just y'all. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're talking about basements today, and we were talking about pros and cons, and we've pretty well covered a great deal of them. You said you had some more pros. Uh, how much it, I'm talking about heating and cooling the basement, it's it's very minimal. Correct? To, heat, to heat and cool the basement, actually, it's a byproduct. Because what you can do is you can run your heat, you know, your supply air to the first floor, right, and then do something odd to Texas. 
put a quarter every turn in each room. That's not They're, odd. That's pretty odd, but no. uh, there's a few people doing it. But if you take that quarter, yeah, yeah, if you take that quarter every turn from that first floor room, right, and then reduct that along your perimeter wall of your basement, and suck the water, the your return from the basement over to your air handler. You've just conditioned the basement, mm-hmm. and you, and grab that coolness, natural coolness down there, back to your air handler, and you're not actually incurring the expense of another heating system for heating or cooling system for the basement. What about just not insulating the ductwork? That was something we didn't get to yet. Okay. The last thing you want is this flexible, you know, spiral, you know, lay it right. all over. You up want the, metal ductwork. You want metal ductwork. You got better air delivery, less friction, so you're going to have more life to your air handler because it doesn't have to fight that restriction in that uh, flexible duct. So your air handler is going to work better. It's going to be, a, um, it's going to be a better air delivery. You're going to be able to get the air where you want it. You don't, you're not fighting all that flexible stuff. But um, that's another that's another pro. Um, it's the first step to really building a green home. You know that green buzzword that we're all hearing about. Mm-hmm. That's the first step. If you're not harvesting the the energy, the coolness, you're in a heating climate. So the whole thing is, is how do you make the home cool right. for the least amount of money? No the biggest thing you can harvest is the coolness below your feet. So how can you even think about building a green home without a basement? Yeah, the main thing they're doing now is putting uh, air conditioning duct and stuff all in conditioned space. But those that don't build basements have to condition the attic. And that uh, it, it's, it's a lot of builders, and I know quite a few builders that are doing it now. And that is the best way to do it. And what they're doing there is spraying the actual foam on the rafters or, or on the decking up at the rafters going all the way up right. on the ceiling and not putting any ventilation in the attic. Now, right. if they would, they could take that money to put in the foam out. Right. And, and put it in the basement. basement. Right. And they'd, then they'd be able to harvest the coolness underneath still their got feet. To, still got to insulate the attic. Yeah, but you don't have to do it as much. <laughs> True. Leon, do you have anything else to add? No, not really. I'm just uh, soaking up all this uh, wonderful uh, uh, northern technology and <laughs> looking for uh, for growing opportunities. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was just reprimanded for men- mentioning mushrooms. I thought it was a good idea, but <laughs> no, no, it implies moisture, of course, which uh, this gentleman's basements uh, no generally uh, do not have. So uh, uh, it's great. I'd just like to mention that uh, uh, in terms of uh, other green things when it comes to trees that – uh, Native Shade Tree Farm and, uh, and a family will have uh, an exhibit at the upcoming uh, Fort Worth Home Show in the Will Rogers Complex. That's uh, just about the middle of March. So we're going to have some of our, our our trees out there and uh, look forward to seeing some people out there to uh, look at all the wonderful exhibits and uh, maybe take them on a tree or two. All right, Tom, oh, you want to okay. tell them how to get in touch with you. How to get in touch with North Texas Basements, uh, phone number is 817-770-BASEMENT, B-S-M-T, which is 2768, 770-2768, or you can get us on the web at info or Tom at N-T-X-B-S-M-T. Say again, N-T-X-B-S-M-T. Dot com. Dot com. All right, Gene. Uh, oh, I'm here. Yeah. yeah. Can I ask? Uh, Talk Leon, in. Can I ask Leon just a quick question? He was going to do some research on an Aspen relative tree that might make it down here in Texas. How's your research coming along? Well, uh, the research has come along fine. Uh, I will be bringing in some of these trees in the next uh, couple of months, probably by April. Um, and uh, this this tree is native to the uh, uh, Kansas, Nebraska area. And right now, uh, that's a pretty bad time to go up there and pick up trees, uh, because of all the snow and ice. And, uh, I'm, I'm sure everybody up there is still huddled in their, in their basements <laughs> and, uh, trying to get away from the elements. Very nice. Very but, nice. uh, uh, uh I'm going to put those in the, uh, some in the ground, some in pots, uh, on our farm. Uh, our farm, we have about 240 acres and a lot of different types of soil. Excellent. We have uh, sandy loam, we have rocky clay, and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to set out several this summer and uh, keep them watered and uh, and see how they fare. But I, from the, what I know about the condition, the growing conditions there and the growing conditions here, as far as 
uh, rainfall, pH, etc. Uh, we are altitude, and we're right at, uh, right in where they are too. So, so you're optimistic. So I'm very optimistic that these will uh, will prosper here and uh and it's a white barked clumping like the colorado aspen yeah, we're used to yes it is it looks just Wonderful. like the ones you see in colorado yeah. and um we're looking forward to it Excellent. all right looks like that's going to end our show for this tuesday and uh we're glad y'all tuned in tune in next tuesday and we'll see you then bye-bye <laughs>